Gaza, I think, will have a calamitous, lasting impact when it comes to Western power. The scale of this crime is simply too big. The moral pretensions of Western power were long regarded with consent by much of the world because of the sordid and bloody history of the West, colonialism, slavery, genocide, unjust wars, backing brutal dictatorships. We could go on. But arming and backing a state so openly and brazenly, which the highest court on earth has decided is plausibly committing genocide, and with the advent, of course, of social media, the most hideous crimes imaginable being live-streamed on a daily basis to the citizens of every nation on earth. Israel's onslaught against Gaza, and specifically the role of Western governments and Western media outlets in one of the great crimes of our age, well, I believe this will prove to be the biggest mass radicalization event in history. Not something I say, by the way, with any jubilation, because the consequences of this may prove deeply troubling. Let's just discuss some examples this week. Israel has now attacked every single hospital in Gaza. No hospital in Gaza is fully functioning. And they are now storming Nasser Hospital, essentially one of the last functioning, and it's barely functioning at that. Israeli snipers are shooting patients and displaced civilians in around the hospital. In one example, an elderly Palestinian man was filmed being shot by snipers as he entered the hospital and had to be rescued by staff at the reception as they tried to avoid being shot themselves as they rescued him. Here's another example cited by The Intercept, and this is troubling. Beyond troubling, by the way. Disturbing. Beyond disturbing. A young man, Jamal Abu Allah Owama, was filmed dressed head to toe in white PPE. He arrived at the entrance of NASA Hospital in Khan Yunis, his hands bound in front of his stomach. His eyes were wide. He looked terrified. He said he'd been subjected to beatings and humiliation and abuse by Israeli soldiers, a common story, incidentally, amongst Palestinian detainees of the Israeli Defence Force. Well, amongst those detainees who survived. He'd been sent there with a message from the Israeli military. Get out of the hospital. You need to get out of the hospital because they're going to blow it up. Forcing a detainee to do this, by the way, is itself a war crime. Now, through a bullhorn or something, the IDF bellowed at those in the hospital, get out, you animals, get out, animals. This young man, Jamal, then left. Shortly after walking out and still inside the gates of the hospital, he was shot dead by an Israeli soldier, shot three times in his chest and abdomen. Now, I've seen the footage of him in the hospital, and then I've seen the footage of him shortly afterwards, dead, of course, in a, in a body bag. Now, there are many victims like this. Here's another one. A 14-year-old girl attempting to fetch water near NASA Hospital, again shot dead by Israeli snipers by the hospital gate. Yesterday, they bombed the orthopedics department of NASA Hospital, killing medical staff and patients. I've seen repeated footage now, over and over again, in fact, of dead babies. Babies were born after the Israeli assault on Gaza began. Video footage of the decomposing bodies of premature babies, for example. This is hideous to talk about, and I'm sure it's hideous to listen to, but it is important. Their short lives consisted of bombings, violence, being surrounded by terror beyond any description, deprived of food, water, shelter, and then, of course, their short, horrendous lives, extinguished. The Palestinian Red Crescent have passionately denounced the mass arrest of medical personnel by the Israeli forces at Al-Amal Hospital, who the Israeli state claim are terrorists disguised as medical personnel. As the Red Crescent notes, storming Al-Amal Hospital and committing such unjustified violations are grave breaches of the Geneva Conventions and customary international humanitarian law. Well, I don't think Israel has any interest in those because of impunity. More, more the point. Attacking and destroying hospitals, butchering patients and doctors, arresting medical staff. If this was a state deemed hostile to the West, that alone, that alone would be deemed one of the great crimes of the century. There'd be overwhelming, deafening outrage. And do you know what? Rightly so. But Israel's destruction of Gaza's medical system, there's barely any outrage at all. As Professor Devi Sridhar, Chair of Global Public Health at the University of Edinburgh, noted back in December, the destruction of Gaza's health system alone could wipe out a quarter of the population in the space of one year. That alone is genocidal, but this has been normalised. The destruction of an entire healthcare system by military means has been normalised. Has everybody gone quite mad? How is the world, the whole world, not screaming at the top of its lungs about that alone. You see, that there, the inability to call out total evil, is a case study of moral corruption. How the outright collapse of any basic moral bearings is infectious, and it will rot Western power from the inside out.
What the bombing of Rafa the other day, when dozens of innocent Palestinians were killed, Rafa, of course, where the population of Gaza has been driven to by under violent threat. One of the worst images I've seen in my entire life, which I will think of probably to the day I die, was the remains of a little girl's body hanging off a wall, like she was on a meat hook, her legs ripped off. I've seen too the footage of her and her sister, also killed, running around before they were slaughtered, full of life, happiness, joy, sweet little girls, like any other. It turns out the girl pictured dead, killed, on that wall, was the cousin of Hussam Zomlot's wife. Hussam Zomlot is the Palestinian ambassador to the United Kingdom. He wrote on Twitter, this is seven-year-old Sidra, the cousin of my wife. The impacts of the Israeli missile were so powerful it flung her out, leaving a mutilated body dangling from the ruins of the destroyed building in Rafa 48 hours ago. My wife's aunt, Suzanne, her husband, Fuzi Hasuna, two of their sons, Mohammed and Karam, Karam's wife, Amuna, and her three children, seven-year-old twins, Sidra and Suzanne, and 15-month-old Malik, were all killed. The family had been displaced from the north of Gaza and took re- shelter in Rafa. We will be relentless until those responsible are brought to justice. I just think to myself, my God, my God, these are just a few of over 13,000 Palestinian children who've been killed in one of the biggest mass slaughters of children of our age. And that toll is mounting every single day. I feel like I'm going mad watching the footage on a daily basis of maimed and slaughtered children. And I don't have kids. And clearly, by definition, I don't think parents have a monopoly over feeling pain over watching children suffer in the most hideous way possible. I don't, of course, think that. How could I? I'm not a parent. But how are those who have brought little fragile babies into the world and watched them grow with all their vulnerability and their innocence, seeing moments when they're scared of, I don't know, the dark or fictitious monsters or seeing moments of their pure joy? How is this mass slaughter of little children not driving them mad? And of course, that is where the total dehumanisation of the Palestinians comes into it. This week, Sky News reported just one story they managed to retreat, just one, about an atrocity which happened back in December. Again, disturbing doesn't cover this. A five-year-old boy called Mumin, disabled, he's got cerebral palsy, and his two young siblings, a sister and a brother. Their father had previously begged his brother, a doctor, to alert the Red Cross about the Israeli tanks behind their house and how they were trapped. On the 15th of December, the IDF stormed their house in a suburb near the centre of Khan Yunis. They knocked down the front wall. The father was waving a white flag, but the IDF shot him dead. They then threw a grenade into the kitchen, injuring the mother, while shrapnel entered the brain of this five-year-old disabled boy, Newman. They then shot dead the mother, and then interrogated the survivors for three hours. I keep having to say this, and I resent saying it, because it is based on trying to work around the dehumanisation of the Palestinians I keep talking about. If that one incident had happened on 7th of October and it was Hamas militants doing that to an Israeli family, it would be regarded as one of the worst atrocities of the day. And again, we would hear this shows how evil, beyond evil and barbaric Hamas is. Committing some of the worst atrocities ever. That's what we'd be told. And this shows they need to be wiped off the face of the earth. You know that's what would happen. But this is happening all over Gaza. We don't know how many have been killed in such circumstances. We just know that of children alone, we're talking about over 13,000 killed already through violent deaths. What we do know is far from being an exaggeration, the official death statistics of over 30,000 killed now, or around 30,000 officially, is drastically understating the actual toll. As one Palestinian from Gaza, who's taken refuge in Cairo notes, When Israel's massacre in Gaza is over, we're going to discover that the number of people killed is far greater than documented. A friend, the sole survivor of eight people struck by a drone while talking to him at his doorstep, told me that his uh, his friends buried the seven without reporting to the Ministry of Health, who are in charge, of course, of the official statistics. What am I trying to say here? The scale of this horror is just too big. It's too obscene to have containable consequences. Western governments have openly facilitated some of the worst crimes of our age. No wonder some countries are now panicking and breaking ranks. The Prime Ministers of Australia, Canada and New Zealand have issued a joint statement opposing any ground offensive against Rafa by the IDF. That's where, of course, one and a half million Palestinians have been driven en masse and calls for a humanitarian ceasefire, an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. Well, it's obvious why they're panicking. But I don't think the West is ever going to recover from this. 
Many crimes have been committed with the complicity of the West, but the scale of this crime is just too obscene and people have seen too much. I don't know what the consequences of that will be. The decline of Western power is not in itself a good thing, because the question is what fills the vacuum. I happen to think that may be, for a long time, bloody chaos. But I think more and more people will arrive at the conclusion that I've arrived at myself. But I have to say, it will be too late, because it's already too late now.